It's a beautiful night for lacrosse as we welcome you to Towson, Maryland. The Under Armour All-America Lacrosse game set to unfold. The North tangles with the South and all points in between on ESPNU. It is so nice to see you again, along with Quint Kesnick. I'm Joe Beninati. We're about to watch 42 of the best boys lacrosse players from the high school class of 09. And Quint, the numbers nationwide tell us there's a lot of talent from which to choose. There's 100,000 high school lacrosse players playing currently right now. These guys tonight, they're the absolute cream of the crop. We're going to talk about their great high, high school careers. Also, we're going to look forward to see where these guys project next year as college freshmen. When we watch the North team work out, we notice they're the bigger squad, but there's no shortage of quickness when it comes to Matt White and Joe Marasco. Uh, Joe Marasco, you talk about a carry charismatic playmaker, Somers, New York. He is headed to Syracuse University. He plays like a Syracuse attackman, confident. He talks like one. He can step right onto the field in the dome and get immediate playing time. Had 212 career goals. Matt White, Ridgefield, Connecticut. He's going to Virginia. He is the best dodging attackman in the class of 2009. He has an opportunity to start immediately in Charlottesville. Had 102 points in his senior year. Just about every member of the Under Armour South All-America team plays with terrific energy. That's the calling card for Chris Lapierre and Jack Doyle. Well, Jack Doyle's known as a fierce competitor. This kid is driven to win. He's a well-rounded midfielder from Gilman. He can score. He can play without the ball. Good, good defense ground balls transition and he faces off he's the Kelly Award winner that's the best player in Maryland and DC he's going to Harvard where he hopes to be a program builder Chris LaPierre Medford New Jersey 6'3 221 yes folks 6'3 221 he's a beast very few players you can compare to LaPierre two that stick out to me Kyle Dixon and Jay Jell Bear and guess what they both went to Virginia as LaPierre will Mark Dixon will be right there on the sideline with these future college standouts and for now he gets the point of view of the South's Chris Leitner. Joining me now is Under Armour All-American Chris Leitner out of Calvert Hall in Baltimore. He's headed to Johns Hopkins University. Chris, the gear, the atmosphere, the overall Under Armour experience got to be pretty cool. Yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, you know, Under Armour and all the sponsors really hooked us up with some cool stuff. Uh, treated us real well, nice dinner, and uh, had heard a really great guest speaker. And uh, it's been really cool just putting faces and names with all the guys from all over the country. So it's been fun. And you mentioned uh, the names from all around the country, some of the best lacrosse players. The South, you're winless in this series so far. Any extra meaning to tonight's game? Um, I mean, you know, we're all competitors. We all come to win. You know, no one wants to lose. Uh, Coach Giblin, first thing he said was, I don't like to lose. I don't want to lose. So uh, we're just going to go out and play hard. And, if it goes our way, it does. If not, you know, it's all in good fun, right? As a defender, all-star games, you talk about high-scoring offenses, playing on the defensive side of the field. What's your strategy, and how do you get a unit to come together in just a few short days? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty tough, especially with these midfielders that uh, they play a lot of offense all year. But, you know, we're just going to talk it, talk it out and uh, just play hard and do what we can. Talking it out, playing hard. Guys, the South ready to get their first win ever in the Under Armour All-America Lacrosse game. Chris and Mark, thanks very much. Now's the time for these young men to show off. It's an all-American preview of great things to come at the collegiate level. All straight ahead next on ESPNU. Serena Williams will be put to the test as the 10-time Grand Slam winner faces fourth-ranked Yelena Dementiva for a spot in the final. Wimbledon Ladies Semifinal tomorrow, 7 a.m. on ESPN2. Attorneys have to make some tough choices, but there's one that's easy. Oasis Legal Finance is the number one choice to provide clients the money they need for bills and living expenses long before their case may settle. Oasis has prepaid millions of dollars to people just like you, with no obligation to repay if you lose your case. I need my settlement money now, but the defendant keeps delaying the court date. After my accident, I wasn't able to work, but my attorney told me about Oasis, and they had a check to me in two days. If you're involved in a lawsuit, call Oasis Legal Finance. Get the money you deserve. Call Oasis. Call Oasis. Whether it's money for bills, rent, car payment, or groceries, call Oasis now. Remember, the phone call is free, the application is free, and there's no obligation to repay if you lose your case. Call Oasis now. ESPNU's coverage of the 2009 Under Armour Lacrosse All-America game is presented by Under Armour. Under Armour introduces its latest innovation, 
UA running footwear. And in part by FreeCreditReport.com. Stay on top of your credit score and credit report at FreeCreditReport.com. Just about time for the fourth annual Under Armour All-America Lacrosse Game and Quint. Uh, this event started back in 06 and did so with a bang. We've seen a number of players graduate from this game to great things in the collegiate game. Names lacrosse fans know well, including Max Quinzani from Duke and Stephen Boyle from Johns Hopkins. Think about what Quinzani out of Duke has done in three years, 131 goals. Duxbury Mass and Stephen Boyle, who plays attack for Johns Hopkins, 63 goals. They will both be seniors next year. Two New England products. And as we can see from the 06 honor roll, a lot of guys who've gone on to do a lot of damage in Division I. That was year one. They'll be seniors next year. Perhaps one of those guys will be the number one overall pick in Major League lacrosse draft after the conclusion of their senior years. The officials this evening for this Under Armour All-America lacrosse game, John Sheehan, Steve Rupel, and uh, Scott Miller will go. North, wearing the red, the white squad, in the white uniforms. The nation's premier high school all-star game is underway. Ian Bradish to bring it ahead for the North in red. They will be playing by collegiate rules tonight, Quint. 15 minute quarters. Nick O'Reilly was on the end line there, thus the turnover. A lot of lines on this field. We'll play the blue men's lacrosse lines. North leads the series. They've never lost this game. And after watching practices yesterday, they are favored in this game. Last year was a 13-12 nail-biter. A victory for the North. Alex White will skip it. Holman back behind the cage. Marcus Holman on this drive. Gets to the inside and Nico Amato stuffed him from close range. Transition time for the North. Kyle Carey helping on the clear. It was a gorgeous little inside roll from Holman, headed to North Carolina. Joe Marasco working in concert with Nick O'Reilly. Hakeem Lecky off the sideline for the Northern team. Trying to break the seal and the scoring in this Under Armour All-America game. A sidewinder well wide from David Lawson. <laughs> Just say, there's a save. Amato heading to the University of Maryland. Been tutored quite a bit by Brian Doherty, former Terp goalie in the mid-90s who led the Terrapins to the national finals. Amato, not the tallest guy, but plays a little bit bigger. I'm impressed with his hand quickness and, and his angle play yesterday in practice. Marasco rolling away from Leitner. Picked up by Shalaya. And now John Greeley gets to go for the North in the red. Approaching the two-minute mark of the opening quarter. Marasco kept at sticks lengths. Shalaya can be a very physical customer. Marasco pops it inside behind the back. A good save as Kemp was able to beat Matt White there. Wheels down the flank exhibited by Chase Winter. He'll slow in for a six on six. Good shot. This bid from Patrick Murray deflected over top. Excellent help by 26 in red. That's John Rannigan, who was the adjacent. He was the near man. His teammate, John Greeley, had backed in a little too far. Rannigan kind of bailed him out there. Good team defense. Chase Winter on the ISO. Kept to the outside by Rannigan. Ball movement here, Casey. Brother Trevor played at Georgetown. On a quick flash, he score. LaPierre finds the corner. Starts with a very, very good save. You see the quick turn by goalie Kemp. 
controls his rebound. I tell you, John Kemp from a family of goalies, then at the other end, Patrick Murray right on the money with a pass to LaPierre, who cuts that alley. If you look to these teams on paper, accolades, you'd have to rate the North a slight favorite. They're bigger, faster, stronger. But the South have more guys who have played together and may play a more team ball. And that's what lacrosse is. It's a team game. It's not a game of indiv individuals. As LaPierre slows the tempo, we hit the three-minute mark of this Under Armour All-America lacrosse game. Roger Ferguson, the long stick midfielder for the South, who has very good stick skills, able to throw a little shake at his defender, then the pass was low. It gets away from Patrick Fanshaw. It goes back to the north. I talked to Lars Tiffany today about Ferguson. And he said he's going to have the green light to stay on the field and play offense. There were times this year where Roger Ferguson, in overtime, stayed on the field and played six-on-six -six offense. And that will fit in terrifically well at Brown, where they like that delayed substitution game with their pole. They like to play kind of a cat-and-mouse game. And Ferguson, a, a two-end long pole midi with an offensive mind. Gave you a quick peek at the coaches for these uh, two squads. As the physical play heats up at midfield, Kevin Giblin for the south, Chris Sweet for the north. 10 second violation. It's Kevin Giblin on the left, Georgetown prep. Chapuka sliding between defenders. Stripped of the ball neatly by Kyle Carey. Great lift by Kyle Carey, Worthington, Ohio. You get under that bottom hand, butt end of the stick or under the elbow, and you lift, and guess what? The pocket becomes an ejector. Ball just pops out the back. O'Reilly for White again behind the back, and just like he was the first time around, Kemp was ready to deny. Starts the transition game for the South in the white jerseys. Emila runs out of room. Quick move to the interior, and that's shoveled wide by Fanshawe. They keep it hot into the alley. That one's sent wide by Peter Baum. Trapuca sails one over Amato, and the South showing that they know how to spin the ball. Passing game, a lot of quick 10-yard passes. It's in the stick and out of the stick, and they're going to need to rely on that style of team play. North has some very impressive-looking isolation dodgers. South need assisted goals. Marcus Holman, 20 in the white, son of a coach. Brian's an assistant in North Carolina. An alley dodge and another missile that was sent high. Peter Baum on the run. Great sign when you think about how many different states are represented in this Under Armour All-America game. Baum hails from Oregon. Off the pick, Holman double team. And, and that's not going to be Holman's game at North Carolina. The Tar Heels return Billy Bitter and Gavin Petraka. Two veteran attackers. Holman's job will be inside and off the ball. An area of improvement that he needs to focus on right now is his perimeter, perimeter speed. His game sense, as good as any, this kid really has a, a spectacular feel and, and a bright in, intellectual lacrosse mind. Marasco, 28 in the red, wants the ball. O'Reilly speeds to turn the corner. Just about got to the top side, a tough pass to the interior, taken back by the Souths. Harry Previs. Previs just gliding into the attack third. Previs, a lefty, projects to be a long stick midfielder at Virginia next year. Playing close defense tonight. Very good wheels for Previs. He ran for the indoor track team while at Gilman. Sharp angle off the outside of the cage. Fanshawe has the reputation for being a very good finisher. I tell you, Fanshawe out of Calvert Hall right down the road here in Baltimore. He'll be playing for Loyola. Charlie Toomey, that's the kind of kid you can plug in as a crease attackman, a left-handed goal scorer. He has a sensational knack at finding the soft spots in the defense. He recognizes when his man is hot and how to find that opening. Patrick Fanshawe, six in white. Faces of intensity on that sideline, nearly halfway through the opening quarter. The save story, dead even at two apiece. John Kemp for the south, Nico Amato for the north, both expected to work 30 minutes tonight. And, and these are the two best senior goalies 
as far as the goalies I've seen this year in the nation. Fiore from the Philadelphia area, Kemp from DC. Emila driving back behind the cage. Pass to the inside, bench on the spin, and Amato makes that stop. Akeem Lecky on the run for the North. No numbers advantage as we share time on the sideline with Mark Dixon. Guys, I'm joined by Connor English, an Under Armour All-American out of Manhasset High School in Long Island. You're headed to the University of Virginia. Virginia national semifinalist, graduates some talent down there. Uh, what are your prospects for the Cavaliers next year? I mean, we're going to be a young team, but I think we have a lot of talent. I mean, you're led by attackmen, Steel Stanwick, midfielders like Brian Carroll and the Brattons, and then defense, we're real solid with Adam Gellman. So I think they're going to be real contenders. Lacrosse, filled with athletes. You are trained in the mixed martial arts. I'm not going to mess with you, but give us a little background on that. I grew up doing karate when I was young, and then I just really got into wrestling. So I went to a local gym where they just do UFC fighting, and I've just loved it ever since. And your experience this weekend? I was so far, the greatest thing, I mean, being able to play with the top 44 kids in the country is the best. Connor, best of luck to you this evening. Connor English joins a talented group down in Charlottesville looking for a national championship in 2010. So, Dom, stars, you mark, looking on from the uh, sidelines, from the spectator seats, has to be pleased with what he sees on this field tonight. Yeah, he, Dom Sarge has some needs next year. One would be a long pole midfielder. You bring in Harry Previs. The second would be there's two vacant attack slots with the graduation of Garrett Billings and Danny Gladding. Steel Stanwick as uh, Connor said, becomes the quarterback. But there are some open spots there. I think Matt White and Connor English are the two favorites for those slots. You know, when I look at a guy like Connor English, I, I see a young athlete who, in the middle school, eight, when he was seven, eight, and nine, he was by far the best player of this class. And gradually now, athletes have kind of reeled him in in terms of his maturity. So he'll, when he gets to down at Charlottesville, he's going he's gonna to have to you know, buckle that chin strap and, and reprove himself. Uh, he has proved himself as one of the best mid, uh, attackmen on Long Island, but he'll have to you know, redo that in the fall. This has been a lacrosse jamboree this weekend with so many different coaches, upwards of 100 coaches watching underclassmen games. And of course, this the marquee game on the docket. Bounced wide on the run in transition there. David Lawson trying to get his hands free. And there is a who's who of coaches here today. Jeff Tambroni, Cornell, Dave Petromala, Hopkins, Tony Siemens here. I mean, there's a, at least a dozen top-notch Division I coaches. Matt White with a quick stick tally gets the North on the board. Early game jitters gone. North settles in for a multiple pass possession. This is just the tail end. Zach Guy, the attackman from Tully, New York, inside, and it's White. The best dodging attackman proves that he can play off ball. Coached by Roy Colsey, former Syracuse orange standout midfielder who played for so many years in Major League Lacrosse. And I'm guessing there are some questions about Matt White, Quint, with respect to him possibly being a midfielder when he gets to the college ranks. Well, it depends on what they need. And if you're Virginia right now, you don't need midfielders. You got Shamel Bratton, Brian Carroll, Ramel Bratton, Colin Briggs, Hughley, Haldy. You got a lot of middies. You need attackmen. Chase Winter in a battle for the ball. It comes up for LaPierre. Then Murray to fire and score. Patrick Murray. Little connection. The South's earlier goal was LaPierre from Murray. This time, the roles are reversed. Patrick Murray, Kent Denver in Colorado, headed to play for Georgetown. Passes the eyeball test with flying colors. Good size kid, really looks the part. Catches and finishes, straight over, straight overhand release to a low location. So he's one that gets away from Denver University. He used to attend their lacrosse camps as we go back to the X for this draw. Murray, an outstanding athlete, an all-metro linebacker. And that may be the last time a top upper echelon player out of Denver gets away from the Pioneers now with Bill Tierney as their head coach. A major, major story nationwide on the college lacrosse slate. The De the arrival of Bill Tierney and his departure from Princeton. Caught everyone by surprise. I sent you a text, Tierney to Denver. You said, oh, good for Seth. No, 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 Seth said Hofstra. Bill, six NCAA championships. You take those gold trophies, you move them west of the Mississippi. Could be a great day for lacrosse now as, as, as game kind of branches out and proves to be more than just a Northeast phenomenon 
I think Tierney will dominate recruiting Texas, Colorado, and California. Just shy of the five minute mark, Quint. Five minutes to go in this opening quarter. The Under Armour All-America lacrosse game from Towson, Maryland. Jake Chapuka. Back behind the cage for Emila and the return for Jake. Son of former NBA standout Kelly. As this one is sailed high and well wide by Peter Baum. Nico Amato coordinating the defense from the goal crease. On his way to Maryland where Brian Phipps is still there for Dave Cottle, right? Yeah, Brian Phipps will be coming off ACL surgery. Bad turnover and an easy stash for Baum. At South practice yesterday, when I walked up to Kevin Giblin, I said, Ke Kevin, what's jumping out at you? He said, Peter Baum's jumping out at me. I said, really? Peter Baum? Portland, Oregon. Dad played at Colgate. And he'll travel cross country to play for the Raiders. Baum, Max Seabald fan. His dad played for Colgate in the 70s, 1975, when Colgate beat Syracuse, Richard Baum, and now his proud son falls in dad's footsteps you mentioned normally an attack when he's filling in at the midfield for the injured greg mcbride one of the tremendous players from the gilman school one of five that were named to this under armor all america lacrosse game mcbride not able to play with a foot injury mcbride played alongside jack doyle at gilman and for full disclosure i coach in the mia as an assistant at boys latin and there were many times that I felt McBride was the more dangerous midfielder. Oh, a slingshot from uh, Jeff Tundo finds the corner and brings a smile to the coach Chris Sweet's face. Tundo drops down low, natural left-hander, and just lets this one rip. Orchard Park, New York, headed to Ohio State. Great look across the field by Zach Guy. His second assist today. Really finding the weak side of the field. Along with Quint Kestick and Mark Dixon, I'm Joe Beninati. Four minutes to go in the opening quarter. The South in the white jerseys leading this Under Armour All-America lacrosse game by one. A pass that gets away from the North's Connor English. And away comes Team South with Patrick Murray in charge, already with a couple of points on a goal and an assist in this opening frame. Really like what I'm seeing out of the goal from the South goalie, John Kemp. Kid make, sorry, Joe, the kid makes the educated pass every time. The easy way out. Good defensive strip there. Lawson playing close to Chase Winter. As this one is sent high by Brian Casey, we could share more time with uh, Mark Dixon. He's got Howie Long nearby. Howie Long Jr., guys, his father is the Hall of Famer. Howie Long Jr. headed to the University of Virginia, an amazing career at St. Anne's Belfield. Uh, you talk about Virginia and their lineage of long pole midfielders. Mike Timms graduates. Uh, what do you see on the horizon for you? Uh, I just plan on going there and working as hard as I can and, uh, and letting Coach Stargia and Coach Van Arzio and the other coaches uh, determine what goes on. Uh, just real excited to go to the University of Virginia. You had a great high school football career yourself as a quarterback. What's it like growing up with a Hall of Fame dad and a brother who plays for the St. Louis Rams? Uh, most people probably probably say that probably be uh, a lot different from from other kids childhoods childhoods but uh, I feel like it's just my dad it's just my brother and um, it's just the careers that they uh, chose real quick I see on your on your forearms you have the 434 written down what does that mean it's uh, actually the area code in Charlottesville Virginia uh, there's no other guys here from Virginia so I guess I have to represent uh, the whole state so send a shout out to all my guys back home Howie Long with the shout out we have a tie ball game as the North gets another marker, but representing Charlottesville, Howie Long Jr. Fellas, thanks very much. Zach Guy tying this game up at three for the North in the red jerseys. As we focus in on Davy Emila. <laughs> 2.20 to go in the opening quarter. And Howie Long 
gets that scouting report of a being a very tenacious long stick. He's got to know the, the college game pretty well from his brothers, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, he's got excellent feet. He's a, he's a talented one-on-one -on -one defender. Played two years of close defense, two years of pole. You think about, and I talked to his coach, Doug Tearing, this week, the drive and incentive that he has and the background, knowing what the collegiate experience is going to be like from his two brothers, Chris, who plays, obviously, for the St. Louis Rams, uh, and his other brother, uh, plays uh, baseball, professional baseball. So uh, this is a kid who comes in. His other brother is Kyle, real tall. Uh, his mom, Diane, and obviously his dad, Howie. Uh, this is a kid who's never content. And and if he can match Chris's work ethic on the lacrosse field, Dom Starr's just got, got a great player on his hands. Family is beaming with pride in the stands tonight. Trapuca from deep and just missing the target. 100 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. South in possession. Holman trying to wriggle free from Fennessy. Baum playing catch on the outside with LaPierre. Big man guarded by McKinney. A feed to the inside and a quick left handed release hits pay dirt. Ryan Casey gets himself on the board. Players headed to Georgetown, off to a good start. Zach Guy for the North team has one goal, two assists. Brian Casey, an attackman out of Georgetown prep. Nice little catch and finish. LaPierre with the assist. He's been involved in three of the South four goals. Casey, who turned 19 in April, has been playing this sport for 12 years. And always at the attack position. The officials giving the South the ball. They have the lead by one with one minute to go in this opening quarter. Guys, you can see Howie Long Jr. in that last exchange. His teammates were joking as he went back from his interview. That goal is yours. You were supposed to be on the field. Get back on the field, Hollywood, and stop talking to the reporters. Mark Dixon right there along the sideline with these Under Armour All-Americans has a, a great perspective on their banter from time to time. It's honestly what these players will remember most about this game down the road is meeting their future college teammates and friends for life for the first time and developing rivalries with the guys going to other schools. So many of them, the top players on their respective high school squads, when they get into a game like this, everybody's just as good or better than you, and that's got to be an eye-opening experience. That was the culture shock that I felt when I was part of an all-star game like this. That's the culture shock we saw at practice yesterday, where players are coming off and getting water, like, okay, I haven't seen 6'2", 200, who's just as fast as me, who's just as hungry as me. Gentleman in that dark golf shirt, Chris Sweet, an Ithaca, New York native. He's led Duxbury High School in Massachusetts to eight straight league titles in the final 20 seconds of this opening quarter. Okay, that Duxbury program, Signature player Max Quinzani. They've won six straight Connecticut championships. Excuse me, Massachusetts championships. A couple teams nipping at their heels. 